Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Nathan Harvey. I lead up Dora here at Google Cloud, and I'm really glad that you're here today to talk to us uh, and, and listen to <laughs> Kevin about what's going on with AI. Uh, so what's going on is there's some new stuff with Dora as well, and you haven't seen it already. Uh, the Dora report is now available. I hope that you all have uh, downloaded a copy and, and taken the time to read it. It's not a short report, so I will uh, I will forgive you if you haven't read all of it just yet, but maybe you've read the AI portions in advance of today's discussion. But even if you haven't, we're going to cover off on at least some of the highlights. Uh, so thank you for downloading the report. It was a, a, a tremendous effort to get all of the data analyzed and the report written and out to you. And, and big thanks to all of our sponsors. We have quite a few sponsors this year on the report, um, and we really appreciate that, that support from all of our sponsors. Uh, and at dora.dev slash research 2024, you can find the report, but there's a bunch of other things that you can find there as well. For example, we have an infographic, which if you don't have time to read the report or your boss doesn't have time to read the report, you can grab the infographic and just uh, you know, print that up, put it in your office, share it with your boss, whatever. Um, we also have uh, listed in that same area uh, a couple of other things that I want to point out. The first is the, the all of the questions that we asked in this year's survey. So I find that these questions can be really helpful when you're when you're looking at something and saying, hmm, they say that productivity improves. I wonder how they're measuring productivity. Well, you can go look at the survey questions and see exactly how we asked that question on the survey. And that can give you real insights into how we like the concepts or the terms that we use, how we define those. In addition to there, um, you'll also find errata for the report. Errata is a fancy way of saying, oops, we made a mistake, uh, but we said it in Latin, so it sounds more official. Um, and what you'll find in the errata is uh, the mistakes that we have found or that you've reported to us uh, in the report. Usually it's small typos. Um, I don't think we've found anything egregious uh, yet this year, but uh, if you come across anything, please do report that so that we can get it fixed. Speaking of getting it fixed, um, we have at dora.dev slash VC, no, we haven't raised venture capital. VC is short for um, version checker. Uh, if you look at the uh, recommended reading page of the report that you have, you'll see that there's a link where you can validate that the version of the report you have is the most recent version. Uh, we are publishing updates as the errata comes in and as we're fixing things in the report. We want to make sure that you have the latest report. This is always difficult with a PDF that we ship to you. How do you know it's the latest? So if you click that link, it will tell you, hey, there's a new version of the report or you're on the most recent version of the report. This is new this year and um, I'm, I'm really glad that we did it so that you can always have the most recent version and you'll know. You can rest easy knowing that you have the latest copy of the report. Of course, Dora.dev is sort of the clearinghouse for all things Dora, including the core model. Um, hopefully you've seen the core model by now, but the, it, it, in case you haven't, at Dora.dev slash research, you'll find the core model. This core model represents the, the most um, important findings that we have had over the decade of research. And really, this model can serve as sort of a capabilities model for you to think about where might our team benefit from improving. So I encourage you to look at the core model, use that. We probably have a recording in our YouTube channel. By the way, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Dora hyphen dev. So if you haven't subscribed there yet, please do so now. Um, and then you'll be able to watch this recording later. So hi, new subscribers. Thanks for joining. So it is my immense pleasure to welcome uh, Kevin today. Uh, Dr. Kevin Storer is uh, a qualitative researcher that we've had on the team for a couple of years now. And I'm really excited because this year, Kevin was able to do a bunch of interviews for us. And really, those interviews give us a lot more context around some of the survey data that we've collected. And not only was he able to do those leading up to the report, but I'm happy to say that Kevin never sleeps. He's done more and more interviews since the report. So over the course of the, the next year, between now and our next big report, uh, we'll likely be publishing findings from some of these interviews. And it, this the qualitative nature of Kevin's work really helps us round out and contextualize some of the survey responses that we get. So it's it's really, really beneficial. Uh, and Kevin wrote uh, a portion of this year's report, and he's going to take us through that. So, Kevin, over to you. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thank you, Nathan. That was a really uh, 
nice introduction that I was fully not expecting. I was anticipating introducing myself, but I appreciate it. It's nice to hear it from somebody else. And uh, thank you, Dora community, for having me today. It's really, really nice to be here. As Nathan just mentioned, uh, today we're going to be talking about some of our latest Accelerate State of DevOps report findings, specifically in relation to developers' adoption of and attitudes toward generative AI use at work. Before we do that, I was going to take a quick second to plug that you should download the report I should know that Nathan Harvey will beat me to this 100% of the time. But now that you've heard it twice, you really have no excuse to go to dora.dev slash dora hyphen report hyphen 2024 and download it if any of the details on the things that we discussed today are of more interest to you. I also was going to take a quick second to introduce myself, but I should also know that Nathan will beat me here too. He's just too good for me. So hello world. Uh, I am Kevin Storer. Uh, I am officially, as of our 2024 report, the qualitative research lead for Dora, and this is part of our continued focus on the human aspects of software development. We decided to supplement our survey with qualitative research in the form of in-depth interviews for the first time as part of our 10th anniversary report. Yay. So that's why I might be a, a, a new face and a new name for you to see on the Dora team and in these Dora community forums. And I'm just thrilled to be here. The Dora community just keeps giving us these really warm welcomes. And I'm, I'm really, really excited to be on this team and to be here with all of you. So thank you first and foremost. There are a couple reasons that we added this qualitative component to supplement the survey that we've all come to know and love. The first is that qualitative research focuses on really deep understandings of very nuanced and highly contextual kind of emotions, perceptions, thought patterns, social influences. So it's bringing some holism and humanity to numbers that sometimes can feel a little bit distant from everyday people and the things that we're really doing on the ground. It also helps us to sort out some of our findings from the survey that, that might be counterintuitive or might need more nuance to really dig into than we can get from a five-point scale. Agree and disagree tells us a lot, but it doesn't necessarily always tell us everything that's happening in the real world. And then also qualitative research helps us to be really responsive to the changing landscape of software development because now I'm right in there with the developers out there experiencing the world in real time. And I can tailor the conversations that we're having even, even down to what's happening and, and the same day or hour if something really pressing emerges, right? So in 2024, being responsive to emerging trends in development means one, not sleeping. Nathan already mentioned that. And maybe uh, is more important than ever, it means to attending to artificial intelligence in development, right? Because it's probably not news to anybody that this is, is uh, a major paradigm shift that we're all going through together. And I'm certain that you're eager for me to stop talking about me and qualitative research and start talking about these findings. So we measured respondents' adoption of AI, their perceptions of and attitudes toward AI, and the extent to which they were incorporating AI into their products at work. We used these 11 individual constructs that you see on the right side of your screen, which were then analyzed as they laddered up into these three facets that are on the left side of that table. So for example, we asked in our survey how much respondents relied on AI, how they used AI, for what tasks, how much their team relied on AI and across what services they interacted with AI. And these responses together are then analyzed as kind of a larger measure of the degree to which that respondent had adopted AI. And that gives us a more robust measure and it also lets us do some fancy statistical things with that data that you can read about in the digital report. And then there was a similar process for perceptions and attitudes where these five questions become a measure of a larger facet, right? So uh, probably not surprising to anybody, <laughs> we saw a high number of respondents indicate that they are indeed using AI in their professional development work. A majority of respondents also indicated that they're seeing their organizations shift their planning priorities toward incorporating AI into their applications and services. This finding is what's represented on the graph of, uh, on the right side of your screen. And you might notice that almost half of the respondents who were surveyed described the shift in organizational priorities as either significant or a moderate increase in AI 
AI being prioritized. So a really, really significant shifts here in folks trying to get AI into their products. One of our findings during our in-depth interviews with developers was that a key motivator that's driving this widespread adoption both at the individual developer level and also at the organizational level is what uh, the Dora team has started describing as FOMO, uh, a more technical term would be competitive pressure, <laughs> where there's sort of this zeitgeist moment happening, right, that we're all kind of feeling. And developers are getting the sense that they're going to be like left behind in the job market if they don't uh, capitalize on this moment to become proficient in using AI. And then many of those same folks in my interviews expressed directly that they felt like AI proficiency is kind of the new bar for continued employment and worried a lot about what that means, especially for entry level positions. They're also perceiving that their organizations are feeling that same pressure that they're feeling on an individual level, where AI is starting to be used as a competitive edge. And even in some cases at the selling point where folks are going out and saying, our products are AI powered, right? And so organizations are, are feeling pressured to kind of uh, adopt and integrate AI onto their products because their competitors are, and then in order to be perceived as competing in a modern way in 2024, this is increasingly important for, for folks. A lot of people even mention that typically uh, to adopt a novel technology, there's there's this massive bureaucracy that that is kind of, you have to snake through in order to, to get the, the CIO to say, okay, uh, and they're foregoing that in some cases with Gen AI because those competitive pressures are, are so intense. Then 75.9% uh, of respondents, so just over three quarters of folks who were surveyed, said that they're relying at least somewhat on AI to perform one or more of their daily responsibilities. So again, more evidence that uh, adoption is happening really, really rapidly and in a widespread way. The most common use cases for Gen AI and development were writing code and summarizing information. The other tasks that we saw a majority of respondents were relying on AI to assist with were code explanation, code optimization, documentation, writing tests, debugging, and data analysis. The rest of the tasks that we asked about had less than a majority, but if you have a uh, very good vision or very large uh, monitors, you might be able to see that even the least common task in, in, our, uh, in our sample code modernization had about 45% of respondents indicate that they were, were relying on AI at least a little bit to perform it. So again, if there is, yeah, I should, I, should, I also cannot read the chart, but I could blow it up beforehand, Kevin, I feel you. So again, if there's, if there's just one takeaway here, it's that AI is, is being adopted rapidly and broadly and for a large number of tasks. So there might be some uh, credibility to that FOMO, right? And this seems to be a good thing overall. 70% of our survey respondents said that they're seeing productivity increases because of using Gen AI at work. And more than one third of respondents describe that increase in productivity as either moderate or extreme in magnitude. So you may also notice in this graph that while there was about 20% of respondents right there in the middle that said there's no impact to their productivity attributable to Gen AI, the folks who reported that Gen AI had decreased their productivity is itty itty bitty and those those error bars are bumping up right right at zero right on the ai extremely decreased my my productivity responses so this is this is great this was the big promise of of using gen ai right that ai will make developers more productive and at least from the self-reported data that that we gathered about developers perceptions of their own productivity this is about as clear as a result can get in support of that now, on a little bit of a different, less optimistic note, let's talk about trust. So trust in Gen AI has been this really highly discussed and debated topic in popular press about AI-assisted development. And uh, there's sort of a lot of mixed results and mixed opinions out there, at least that I'm seeing, I'm sure you're you're also seeing the same things. So just to be clear, I'm gonna couch our findings in hyper-local terms by saying that most of our survey respondents said that they had some trust in the quality of AI-generated code, but the degree of that trust was fairly low. So almost 40% of, of our respondents said that they had either little or no trust in the quality of AI-generated code. 
What's interesting about this is that common wisdom and prior research about adoption of novel technologies in a general sense has shown that people typically need to trust a product before they use it. This does not seem to be the case here. You may recall from like literally 30 seconds ago <laughs> that the developers that we surveyed said, we're, we're using it broadly for a lot of different tasks. It's making us way more productive. Now these same developers also say, I don't really trust it though. And this is exactly the type of counterintuitive finding where, where we benefit from having interview data where I can, I can sit with developers and push on this contradiction a little bit more directly. So what I found in following up on this is that developers are kind of used to not trusting the code that they get online and from other people, right? Developers are a little bit skeptical and that, that skepticism is kind of built in. A lot of my participants said, well, it's not really any different than Stack Overflow. I, I can't trust the people on Stack Overflow either. I don't just copy and paste it. It doesn't mean I can't use it. It doesn't mean it doesn't get me 80% of the way toward what I'm, what I'm doing. And so am I using it? Yes. Is it helpful? Yes. Do I trust it? No. Does it really matter to me? Mm, not, not totally clear yet, right? We're, we're still kind of used to working in this paradigm of, of trust but verify, but we don't really trust and, and we're verifying. And then finally, before we get into our lean coffeeing, uh, before it's beyond its, its current uses, we asked about AI's potential impacts on the future of work, productivity, and society, which is also a topic of a lot of discussion and speculation, and frankly, uh, popular media for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. I looked this up the other day, and I, I found an example of, of AI in, in fiction from like 1800. So uh, go look that up. I found it quite interesting. So to explore developer sentiments on these more societal issues, we asked respondents to predict the impact of AI on the quality of their product, their delivery speed, their organizational performance, their careers, society at large, and then the environment in the next one, five, and next 10 year timelines. And so we did see some concerns about Gen AI's impacts in the future kind of across the board, especially on developers' careers, the environment, and society, where developers' concerns seem to be most pronounced at a five-year time horizon, and then they sort of level out or plateau. So basically, in human terms, there's this expectation that the negative impacts of AI will escalate for five years and then sort of even out. Uh, but given the widespread use and reported productivity increases, it doesn't appear as though these concerns about either trust or wider societal impacts are inhibiting adoption use at this point. There are a number of reasons that this could be, that folks recognize a potentially negative side of AI but still want to use it. It might boil down, again, to FOMO or competitive pressure where AI is just such a paradigm shifter that there seems to be sort of an inevitability about AI usage. When I talk to developers about these topics, I, I definitely feel that, that sense of inevitability and maybe doesn't feel like it's, it's necessarily optional to adopt anymore in a lot of ways. Um, but we'll continue to unpack uh, the reasons why and continue to ask folks what they think is going to happen next. So that's all that I had to share today. Thanks again for your attention and for having me. And then I'll turn it back over to Amanda and we can get to discussing.